This is the Ryzen 5600 non-X, the best processor in terms of value for competitive shooters. At only $73, you can push a whole lot of frames with this AM4 processor. We'll be running the Ryzen 5600 in our usual fast-paced multiplayer shooters. And in the later part of the video, we're also going to be comparing this against AM4's best upgrade pathway, the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. And on top of that, let's chuck in some memory comparisons as well. See if that makes any difference for the Ryzen 5600. So we've got a lot of things to cover here. Let's do a quick rundown. We're using our X570 rig for our Ryzen 5600, and we're going to pair this with Steam Hardware Survey's most popular GPU, the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. Latest drivers and windows are used for our testings. Games were run for at least 30 minutes before we started benchmarking to ensure consistency, and all videos are recorded by an external PC, so there's no performance loss. Okay. Let's start with our first game. Warzone, we'll start with 1080p, no upscaling, and this is what you'd get. On our usual benchmark, that's about 140 average FPS with lows at around 80. One thing that I wanted to revisit for this CPU testing is the effect of NVIDIA Reflex and Boost. So here's all three scenarios, and it's pretty obvious that Reflex plus Boost is much more stable with the Ryzen 5600 compared to the other two settings. Okay, real-world gameplay now, and we are clearly both GPU and CPU bound here. We are also getting a bit lesser frames compared to our benchmark run. When we are engaged on heavy action scenes, our FPS does drop to about 100 and lows at 80. Frame types is mostly consistent, but does result lower. In the Gulag, the FPS does pick up significantly, including the lows, and this makes hitting our shots much easier. Frame times has improved to about 6 milliseconds compared to 9 milliseconds on our earlier scenes. Warzone is definitely a decent experience with the Ryzen 5600, especially when you consider that this is a $73 processor. Running at 1080p competitive settings with Apex Legends, and this is also a good experience despite being GPU bottleneck. We are using about 60% of our processor and we're getting about 200 FPS when we are just running around the area. Frame times are pretty consistent and is around 4 milliseconds. However, when we do get into some heavy engagements with effects and explosions, our FPS does drop lower to 150. This brings our frame times back to 6 milliseconds, which is about a 40% increase. But overall, this is a decent experience for Apex Legends. You can't argue with the value that the Ryzen 5600 brings for this fast-paced game. Continuing with some of our fast-paced shooters, we have Fortnite. And in this game, we have competitive settings, which is mostly low. Okay, let's first have a look at all three APIs to see how the processor behaves on different scenarios. Performance mode would always be the preference for most competitive builders, and in this case, it does bring the most FPS and slightly better 1% lows compared to the others. Not amazingly good, but certainly the best choice amongst the three. Interestingly, because we are less GPU bound here, the Ryzen 5600 has a higher usage in this mode. On a real world game, performance mode does start with KV stuttering at the start of the game. However, this does stabilize after a while. On build fights, we're getting about 250 FPS and lows at 140. There are some random stuttering, which is common for Fortnite. However, we are getting a decent experience here overall. We're able to hit those shots. GPU usage on the RTX 3060 is at around 50%. CPU users can go all the way up to 70% in Fortnite. And before we proceed, I just want to highlight that we do a lot of work to ensure the validity of this test and that we are a very small YouTube channel. So if you support what we're doing, please subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Okay, let's move on to the next game. We've got more fast-paced shooters and here we have Valorant. This is a perfect game to test our Ryzen 5600 because this game doesn't require much graphics capability. On scenes we're in, there isn't much happening. We're getting about 400 FPS and can even touch that 500 FPS mark. However, when we do engage in a heavy firefight, the Ryzen 5600 pushes side and our FPS does drop to 300 and sometimes can go even lower than that. This is still a pretty decent experience with frame time stable at 3 milliseconds during these fights and we are able to definitely hit those shots. Toning down to our slower paced shooters, and here we have PUBG. We are running the X11 Enhanced API. 
and we are getting pretty good frame rates of 170 fps on open areas with lows at around 128 although pubg does cover a lot of landscape we are not fully maxing out our rtx 3060 12 gigabyte here and therefore our ryzen 5600 is able to push those frames we do get random stuttering in this game when we are moving around and when we do get into heavy action scenes with multiple enemies and effects our fps does drop lower to 130 and can even go closer to 100 fps it is still a decent experience and truly an amazing value for this 73 dollar cpu moving on to another dx12 title and we have hell divers 2 and here on our bug infested planet there's a lot of bugs there's a lot of explosions a lot of effects and we are at the highest difficulty which is hell dive performance miles were at about 70 fps with lows at 50 frame times are pretty stable here obviously 70 is not that high but this is a pve game so we're fine once again we are gpu bound and our ryzen 5600 is running at about 70 percent utilization one thing i forgot to mention is that the ryzen 5600 runs pretty cool sure we have an aio here but check how cool this processor is we're pushing 70 watts here and it's about like 50 degrees so that's pretty good okay let's have a look at how much the gap is when our ryzen 5600 a 73 dollar processor is against am4's best gaming cpu the ryzen 5800 x3d first up we have warzone and look at that at first glance it seems like we are only getting about 10 fps but in reality we are getting about 20% bitter lows and that's impressive. The difference in terms of CPU power isn't that much as well, but the raw performance of the 5800X3D is quite good. One thing to note here is that the 5600 is able to sustain those clocks. However, I think Warzone does benefit more from having those extra cores with the 5800X3D. Let's move on to more CPU intensive games and here we have Fortnite performance mode and this is very interesting. We've run the 5800X3D benchmark multiple times and it seems like we are getting better lows on the Ryzen 5600. Whilst the raw FPS does point to the 5800X3D and this could be due to higher clock space of the Ryzen 5. When we move on to the X12, we are very close to each other. The 0.1% lows are terrible for the 5800X3D and we have validated this one as well multiple times. The results are exactly the same. Another CPU intensive game is Valorant and you can see how the 5800X3D is definitely an upgrade here over the Ryzen 5600. There's about 150 FPS more over the Ryzen 5600 with significantly better lows too. When we proceed to our grenade benchmark, it does become clearer that the Ryzen 5800X3D is unbeatable. But hey, we're comparing it against a $73 processor, so I think that's not bad for the Ryzen 5600. Moving on to PUBG, we can see that the difference in FPS is not much here on our running benchmark. They are clearly close to each other and the clock speeds are indeed similar. When we move on to our more intensive mortar benchmark, it is also very similar. So if you're playing PUBG, spending more on a GPU might be more advantageous for you. In Helldivers 2, it does pretty much the same with our PUBG benchmark. They are very similar to each other because we're GPU bottleneck here. The performance scaling on this game is definitely dictated by the GPU so in here it makes more sense allocating that extra money on the GPU rather than investing on a higher CPU if you're thinking of saving a few dollars and getting a lower speed RAM this is the performance you would get against the 3600 megahertz RAM which we've used here and Fortnite the raw FPS does pull ahead when we're using the faster RAM kit there's also a difference in the lows in terms of Valorant there isn't much difference here this is probably just a margin of error for PUBG, you can see that this game doesn't show much difference when you have faster RAM on a stable running benchmark. However, when we move on to our mortar scene, our Ryzen 5600 with a faster RAM does eventually pull through. In Helldivers 2, where we are GPU bound, there also isn't much difference between the two configurations. This here is based off a realistic scenario. Budget conscious PC gamers who will be buying this Ryzen 5600 wouldn't have an RTX 4090 or 4080. For the most part, this is the performance you will be getting. If you guys are interested in more CPU testing, subscribe to the channel. And if you're thinking of buying the Ryzen 5600, I've got the link in the comment section and there's a coupon code for an extra discount in there as well. All right, that's it, boys. I'll see you guys in the next video.